Greetings ladies and gentlemen, I am StuDog and we are here today with a tutorial on how to get Star Trek TNG, a final unity to run on a modern computer system. This would have been a little bit easier if we had original old school hardware. However, as I only have pieces of 486s lying about, we're just going to have to make do with the old Samsung i5. So let's get on with the presentation, shall we? So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm going to presume that you have downloaded and installed Defend Reloaded and that is what we are looking at right now. So to start off with, we're going to go to Add, Add Manually, DOSBox Profile and it will give us a profile editor to have a little look at. So I'll make this a little bit bigger for you guys to see him. So in your profile name, type in Star Trek A Final Unity. Um, I'm just going to type test because I already have a Final Unity profile ready to use. So our program file will leave that blank for the moment. Setup file. Now I'm working on the basis that you've got a disk. So we click on that guy. So we're going to go to the drive. And our setup file, this is where I can't remember what it is or where it is, uh, install. Yeah, that guy. So that has us set up to run the installation file. So if we just click OK to save this. You've not defined a file name for the game program, that's fine. We will sort that out in a moment. So we have my rather messy desktop here. So let's go to our task program. Oh, there's one thing that I've forgotten. We'll have to edit that again. That will make your CD drive sound like a buzzsaw. Whee! You need to go to drives. Additional automatically mount all available CDs. It's a very important step because if you don't do that, it won't detect the the CD properly and it'll tell you weird things like uh, you don't have enough memory or your CD drives not fast enough so right click on test and run setup and that'll give you a funky 1995 style MS-DOS installation thing so install game okay uh, we want to install the optimal version. We need every every help we can get to make this baby run properly. So okay. So this speed check is something that it would fail if we didn't do that mounting of drives things. So that's definitely needed, and it does take its sweet time about it. It's one of those things that you can just sit down, leave it, and go away and come back again. Imagine what this would have been like in the 90s. On an actual 486. I did actually have this game for an actual 486 some time ago. So after quite a while, you'll get a menu with all the information that you need. Um, this is telling me that it's actually in a 486. It's a... Uh, some good lying that my computer is doing. So we just say OK, that's fine. We'll just go to the first thing on the list and we'll just go with what it automatically says, STTNG, and hit OK. And there's already a copy of the game in this directory. Are you sure you want to proceed and overwrite it? I've installed it before, so yeah, it won't hurt to install it again. Proceed. Engage. And a good old fashioned 1995 style installation screen. The installation is finished. The process itself took around 10 minutes. So the game has been installed in the directory CSTTNG. Write that down. And yes, all this is relevant to using DOS, which we are not going to do. But we do need that directory though, so keep a note of that. 
and press the OK button. Uh, set game options, let's have a wee look at what it says up in here. Uh, set difficulty, we'll leave that at Ensign. Set text, yeah, we'll put text on. Return to previous menu. Configure hardware, set up your sound card. Auto detect, give it a sound test. You do not hear Captain Picard saying make it so, you will not hear sound in the game. Oh dear. Make it so. There we go. Sound test was fine. Okay. Set up video mode. Uh, 320 by 200, 256 colours. If you do not see a picture of the Enterprise after this dialogue box, you will not see graphics in the game. Oh dear. Ah. She's beautiful. And return to previous menu. Exit and save. So that leaves us with just one final thing to do, and that is get the game running. So, right click, test. Um, we edit that. So we want to click on this little thing here next to path. And see, I will show you the path to follow to get to it. Click on local disk. So go through your files, go to users, and then user, and then defend reloaded. This is where your virtual hard drive is. Double click on this guy. And sttng, that's the file that we have just set up. And yeah, I presume that to run it is just sttng and save that, OK. And if we're really lucky, by double clicking this, and waiting a few moments, you get the game. There is an intro sequence, uh, let's skip that, we'll hit escape. We'll hit escape again. Yep, so it takes you through the opening and title sequences, and there we go, the game operating normally. Using the Defend Reloaded program, the game runs quite sweetly. There's very little to no issues with it, apart from just the occasional bit of lag during the video scenes, but I guess that's just an issue between the CD-ROM and the DOS box itself, there's not much we can do about that. Aside from going and getting original hardware, finding a proper 486, poor old yellow grey 486s that might still exist these days. For that purpose I have made a representation of how the game might appear if you had a 486 to run it on. Ah, poor old grey 486 mouse. Ah, hold on, I feel my phone vibrating against the back of my leg. Hurro, ro, ro. Hey, Stew Dog, the 80s called. They want their stuff back. Arr this should be relatively simple. It should be an easy matter to just simply take the Enterprise back in time. 
pretty sure that Fred can do that. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll get Fred to take the Enterprise back to the 80s. I'm sure Iron Butt might have an idea on that one. Mr. Data, do you have any suggestions? Perhaps. Near certain singularities, the time-space continuum folds back upon itself. If we maneuver the Enterprise in close enough, we would be able to observe these folds directly, and possibly obtain a view of the pulsar before its collapse. That's nice in theory, but there's a limit to how close we can go to that black hole without serious danger to the ship. We could execute a tight parabolic trajectory around the singularity. The slingshot effect would accelerate us away safely. Will the ship's structure be able to withstand the strain? I believe so. However, there are too many variables to accurately compute a probability for success. All right, well, I did save the game. All right, Data, make it so. Admiral's Log, Stardate 47199.3. We have lost contact with the Enterprise. She's several days overdue, and I fear the worst. I'm dispatching the USS Hood to investigate. Whoops! <laughs> Whoops! Whoops! You've just destroyed the Federation Starship Enterprise, killing over 1,000 people. And all you can see is whoops! Well... Being that we're all dead, I'm going to go and get some sleep. Good night. Make it don't. Before we finish up, I'd just like to say a quick thank you to Fred Kasdan, Spooky Lucy Lucifer, and Pac Billy for providing me with some of the other materials that I used during this episode. Thank you very much. You make this project the fun thing that it is. See you later. <laughs>